Hello everyone and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This is episode 8. Last time we explored, to the best of our ability, as much of the Junon region as we could. There is one remaining that we cannot actually get to at this time. And we also unlocked hard mode for Fort Condor, which has also placed itself on the map. But pretty well done, if I say so myself and a really enjoyable region to explore and wander around in. However, it's time to proceed to the fortress with the main scenario. So let's go and check out Junon. I'm very excited for this. Highly anticipating our entry into this location because there's just so many great scenes here. As we wander through the ruined villages of the Republic that stood before and a reminder of Shinra's dominance over the region. We'll make our way over to their facility. And I wonder how this is going to go this time because the original, you walk right into the little fisherman town right underneath. Uh, and the little fisherman town in this version is this. Ruins. So very different. That said, was never in doubt. I think this is kind of the really interesting thing that it's like you can't go back to Midgar because Midgar's on lockdown. There's Shinra border patrols, you, and then Calm was on lockdown for a while. Can't go there. Got to avoid them. And then we're like, let's stroll right into Junon Harbor. <laughs> Shinra occupied space, dressed as, as uh, an ex-soldier and uh, an avalanche. All this propaganda. Hey guys, don't report us. No civilians allowed. Yeah, we de definitely look like a pair of civilians. I can't let you through. Look at us, just a group of lowly civilians and their dog. All right, I guess we're going around the side here. Angler's stowage. Okay. So all of this is Junon. Everything above us, below is under Junon. Little more than an impoverished fishing village. <laughs> Figures, Shinra's always gotta have someone to stump on. It's their friggin' MO. Oh, so the village still exists? It's just like deeper in? That's awesome. Wow, okay. So I'm like, how are we gonna get to Mr. Dolphin? light. Damn, okay. I see the electric beams. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Holy shit, that is amazing. Oh, this is so nice. Cause I was like, oh, they've, they've like, instead of having it just be the village underneath or like next to Junon, it's just a reminder of the Republic in uh, post-war and it's all in ruins. And there are people that are scattered about doing their best over here. And I, I assumed that there would still be like, you know, the Priscilla stuff in some capacity somehow. But the fact that they got me, because look at this. It's just even further in underneath, which makes so much more sense. It's just because that Junon checkpoint that we just went to, I thought that that was like the elevator that is usually right next to the village. Dude, 
dude. It's even got the giant fish skeleton as well, like all the bones. Seeing this from a distance is beautiful. We've seen that uh, that post before at a different dock. So in the same way that we've unlocked chocobo carriages to take us between the Grasslands region and Junon, I think we've, we'll, we may potentially be unlocking a boat ride to that dock that we discovered as well. <laughs> it's amazing the amount of things that you can see just when you're looking from a from a bird's eye view or as close to a bird's eye view as you can get. It's just it's just a dolphin, guys. There's nothing serious about that. Not at all. It's not a plot element. I'm just so happy that this is here. One moment. Welcome to Under Junon, our sunless oasis. My name is Rhonda. I'm the mayor and sheriff around these parts. Hmm. on who's asking a woman who could turn you in and be a hundred grand richer for it <laughs> well you know what they say can't take it with you hmm. Hmm. and Aerith to boot huh that's another half a million on top <gasps> half a million <laughs> Down here, though, we know when to turn a blind eye. Consider our lips sealed. Uh, sorry, but I call bullshit. Well, I don't think you would if you knew even half of what my town's been through. You don't like it? Leave. But over there, there's a quiet little inn where everyone's welcome. Any guys in black robes pass through? Not that I saw. Did see some black suits, though. Two guys and a girl. Looked pretty tough. Well, well. They made a beeline right for the elevator. Now we're talking. No, don't even think about it. In case it isn't obvious, upstairs is Shinra turf. And the same goes for the elevator as well. Don't ask me what, but the company's got something big planned up there, and security is tight. You start anything, anything at all, and there will be consequences. Already perfect. Already perfect. Great sequence to get introduced to Junon. Initiating the literally underneath Ju uh, like Upper Junon, the Shinra oppression that they're like, we're not obviously on Shinra's side. The ability that Avalanche being fugitives is very widely accessible information and that we are also very identifiable. Like, look at us, man with a gun arm, dude with a giant buster sword and a soldier uniform, like Aerith, the last remaining agent. Like the fact that there are bounties out and people can look at that and access that is very good because, like I said, like you walk around super recognizable. It's kind of hilarious that you can approach the Junon checkpoint with Shinra soldiers and be like, and they just say, no civilians. I'm like, yes, this group. <laughs> uh, so I really, really like that. I love, absolutely love there being sort of like mayors and sheriffs of all of the locations. Like they have their own sort of, um, you know, people in, in power and their own little group and community, and you feel that, and it's so great. A little inn where everyone's welcome. Behave yourselves now. And that is the thing, because you act up 
when you're literally under oppression here by a tyrannical rule and there will be consequences from up on high. And this group can come in with the intention to do good, but can in inadvertently cause way more harm. I'm kind of interested in the fact that Rude, Elena, and Song came through here instead of just getting a helicopter through to Upper Juno. Don't care what she said. There's got to be black robes around here somewhere. So how are we going to find them? That would depend on where they are headed. If they mean to continue west, there are only two ways off this continent. By sea or by air. Right. Might want to ask around town then. Locals will know routes not on the map. May have even seen stragglers pass through. Or got boats for rent or something. How about we meet at the inn when we're done? Sounds good. And remember, low profile. New Queen's Blood players await my challenge. I gotta get everyone's points up. I need to remember to use more synergy skills with all of my characters as well, but it's definitely side quest and dialogue related for the for the most part. Come and visit under Junon, where the waters rock o green. Don't worry, little lady. I'll fix you up good as new. Then one day we can take you. I can't even hear this person. You're looking shiny and new in no time. Some of the voice work is obviously like proximity based, so you have to try and get the camera close. But then other times Chadley will speak to you from 5,000 miles away. Shipping and wood bending. Time moving on. And the light here. The way it bounces off the ocean below and the metal above. A pastiche of contrasts. The stark steel beams. The weather beaten homes. The drying fish. Oh, made your way out here, huh? Mind if I get a shot of you? I've got the perfect backdrop. See, why is it that you can have Cloud in this pose in not photo mode, but then he can sit there for this scripted thing with snaps? I'm like, God damn it, man. I, want, I wanted this pose outside of Junon seeing the city from a distance. It's so difficult. Under Junon's a fascinating little town. Their water is especially so. I mean the color. This beauty comes at a dangerously high price though. It's worth documenting before it's gone. Anyway, if you know any other camera worthy subjects. Snapped, marked a picturesque location on our map. All the way on the edge of that boat. All right. Brittle houses in the sea air. Paint chipping and wood bending. Time. Have you met Priscilla yet? You'll know her when you see her. She's such a special girl. Cute there she is. Clever to boot. It's no wonder that Dolphin has taken a liking to her. Priscilla's even managed to teach her Dolphin some tricks. She's our town's pride and joy, I tell you. Priscilla mentioned. Dolphin mentioned. I just love that old book smell. Hey there, looking to augment your folios? No, I only have five points, well, sir. Hope you found what you needed. Have you met Priscilla yet? Many years ago, this stretch of ocean was home to the Republic of Junon's capital, a floating city built atop a fleet of interconnected ships. Priscilla's even managed to I, uh, in regards to the roaming dialogue from characters that you walk past, I feel like it repeats too willingly, you know what I mean? They couldn't live without it, and they made sure we couldn't either. Gotta make that money, right? People never need... I'm not sure if it used to be like that in the original, uh, the first remake. Back in the day, it was lousy with fishing boats. But in this one, it's like if you linger too long next to an NPC, they just they just repeat like almost immediately. And then if you walk away and come back, they repeat almost immediately. And I don't think it was that often in the original 
or uh, I may be misremembering, but it just like, it's kind of interesting, especially with like the radio broadcasts. They just, you're like standing there and then it like, straight again, Wait. goes back into it. <laughs> the Republic of Junon had no short. Back in the day, it was lousy with fishing boats. This music is gorgeous, however. Oh no! Card playing we're twins. For rookies. We're looking for rich rookies. Uh huh. Then Darren and Devon. Okay. Oh, hey there, Mister. Are you looking for someone to play Queen's Blood with? We'd be more than happy to go a round or two with you. I'm Devon, the younger brother, and I'm Darren, the older one. And together, we're the Double D Duo. A team of twins who love Queen's Blood. You'll face my little brother here first. If you win, then I'll take you on. Two for the price of one. Sweet deal, right? Speaking of prices, if you lose against either of us, you gotta fork over three gil. Three whole gil? The more twins, all right. Uh, we'll go with this deck, see how we go. There'll be two rounds in this one then. More Queen's Blood is a yes from me. Okay. I can rock with this. What's that? You can't place your cards anywhere? What happened? Why can't you place your cards anywhere? Did I mess something up for you, sir? See, there's winning, and then there is absolutely crushing. And I think that's very important. <laughs> there you go, more twins. encroach upon their territory and freeze them out of the game. Not bad. All right, but now round two. You gotta beat me. Don't worry, Devin. I promise I'll avenge you. All right. Oh, we get an ogre for this one. Oh, that's a that's a cool one. It powers up. Two above, two below. Well, uh, opens up two above, two below. Which is kind of interesting because on this type of board that we're playing on, it uh, does not work because there we don't have five squares. We only have uh, we only have um, three rows. So for that to make sense, you'd have to put it on the bottom or the top to even get its benefit. Um, I shouldn't need to mulligan here. Open with the Moogle and Chocobo. What did he- what does this do? When played, lower the power of allied and enemy cards on effective tile by one. So he's lowering his two here, which is very interesting. Okay. I mean, if you want. You can do that if you want, sir. Oh, I lost this one. I made some misplays. There you go. We lost. Pain. That's right. We all lose sometimes. I'm going for the rematch, however. Same deck. What have you just done? Oh, it de it destroyed the- Oh, it destroys a card? Crazy. Alright, well, I'm doing this. Aha! I need my Queen Bee to get that back. Hmm. 
problem. Okay. I don't have enough. Oh, I do have enough to get eight on this one. Yes, perfect. There you go. Nice. We'll do that. Cool. We should... We should win. Because we'll have eight and ten. He'll only have whatever he puts down here. So I'll power up what we have. There you go. We should win here. Yeah, 8 and 12 and 12, baby. Defeated. Big old chocobo helped me out there. Very good. The ogre card. Aww, I can't believe we lost. You're better at this than I thought. Hold up. Does this mean we don't get our three gil? No, he totally still owes us. I'm pretty sure the deal was if we lost, we got three gil. Isn't that right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You may have beaten us this time, but we'll get that three gil from you yet. So if you're ever in the mood, come back and play. Wonderful. All right, there's that done. Crazy kids in their queen's blood. They were no match for me, however. Gabe's Chocobo Express! Oh, nice. There you go. He made sure to yell it nice and loud so he actually knew that he's uh, in business properly. Go. Look at that. Very nice. What type of weapons you got for us, sir? So they got fishing gear too, huh? <laughs> what can I do you for? Uh, you got any... No, okay. Look, you can buy the weapons that we could have potentially missed, but there you go. We're alright then. <laughs> Don't be a stranger. At least for now. Where'd those robed fellas? Word around town is Shinra's holding some kind of big event up top. Wonder what? Yeah, I wonder what that could be. All together in a group? Didn't expect that. Maybe wonder if it's to do us. with uh, a presidential ceremony. I see that you've made your way to Under Junon. This town is quite reminiscent of the Midgar Undercity, isn't it? The severe lack of sunlight being one similarity. Something that I have actually discovered that you can do with the transmission volume when Chadley or Mai speak to you and you open up your little radar fixing communications gun item is uh, you can actually just put the transmission dialogue to the controller speaker and then if you go into your PlayStation 5 settings, you can turn the controller speaker to zero. And that literally silences them. You can read the dialogue on screen, but you don't have to listen to it. And uh, I just feel like that is an improvement. So if you ever need the Chadley and my kill switch, that's how you do it. So, we've got our combat where we can do the Phoenix Materia, but we'll, we'll wait until we've done the Crystal first, and then we'll get that. Ooh, we get Elemental Materia this way, Conqueror of the Skies and Spirit Up. Uh, very good. Two-star Lightning Materia, an enemy skill, Plasma Discharge, and enemy skill, Soothing Breeze. Very good. All right, I think I'll do these. Uh, I would like the elemental materia, please. All right, I finished up the challenges that we have to do for now, except for the phoenix you made one. Short work of that simulation. Yes, I did. I can't okay. help but wonder where we'll meet next.
That's all right, Chadley. You can keep wondering. I am going to include some elemental material. So having that on armor or weaponry will be real nice. We just have to actually get some link slots happening. And I think I'll go for... I kind of like the AP up on this one. So I might leave elemental until I come up against an enemy that's going to need it. And I think that there is an enemy coming up that's going to need it. So we'll reassess so fascinating possibilities. when we get closer. Oh my gosh! Actual customers! Oh my gosh! Um... Cool! What do you have? Should I buy some booster packs? Because I still haven't bought booster packs. Let's get some Queen's Blood booster packs. Give me them. I think these are the same two that we could purchase uh, ages ago. So we finally got some boosters. Hey, Who's preaching outside? Sometimes window shopping ain't enough. The life stream must be preserved. It is the essence of our planet. The very thing that sustains us. And we must not bleed our mother dry. She's speaking the truth. Special delivery, coming in! Only so many ways you can prepare fish, and I'm running out of ideas. Some fishing village this is. Ain't even allowed to take a rowboat out. Shinra's saying it's only a temporary prohibition. But people gotta eat. Anyway, short of stealing a boat and causing a scene, both us and our black robe friends are SOL. So well. We should have never let them build a reactor in our waters. That's true. The Marco Green Waters with the underwater reactor. God, I cannot wait to see the underwater reactor. My God. All right. Let's see what's biting today. Look at that. So, what's happening topside? A Shinra event. When they're pulling out all the steps for it. You gotta get up there to see it. <laughs> How do you propose we do that? Hitch a ride on the Condor? Damn, they got a protest going on. Damn, guys, I didn't know this game was political. Oh no. Not the foundation of most narratives. Elevators are only way up, but Rhonda won't thank us if we storm it. We're recruiting for the tavern. Recruiting for crows against Shinra. Oh, I heard about the crows. I looted one of your nests, and you wouldn't let me into one of your caves. Three-eyed fish of the Marco Ocean. Eat it raw? I'll tell you when. Before Shinra came along, we fight for a world untainted by their greed. A world with clean waters and vibrant forests. Join us in the crow's nest and help us put an end to Shinra's tyranny. This is perfect. The energy in Junon here being underneath uh, Upper Junon and Shinra. Perfect. This is really good. This is exactly the type of energy that I would want out of Junon. That there is like a spark of hope and fight here, and it's not this defeated misery. Yeah, that's great, right, Nal. Do the posters still crooked? We got our market board stuck in a rut, which we've already done. So many flyers on there, and only one quest. Ceremony, ceremony. It's an excuse for them to show off. Dilly dally, shilly shally. Hmm. We've got a Queen's Blood player. Competition there is around here. Isabella. Huh? You're not looking to throw down, are you? Sorry, but I was just about to leave port. Oh, name's Isabel, by the way. 
Was looking for a challenge, but failed miserably. Since this place was a total bust, I figured I ought to try my luck elsewhere. Although, maybe you can put up a decent fight. What do you say? One round of QB before I set sail? We'll go around, Isabel. Oh, we get Shiva for this. Enfeebling abilities. You now own a card that can lower the power of or enfeeble other cards. When a card's power is reduced to zero, it is destroyed and the position it was occupying becomes empty again. Additional tactics on the field. There are also cards whose abilities activate only when they are destroyed or enfeebled. Therefore, sometimes it benefits you to use enfeeblement abilities on your own cards rather than your opponent. Part of the fun is Queen's Blood is finding novel ways to win. So let's take a look because we got some new cards. So we've got the Mandragora. Uh, we've got the Flan. Um, we have a Riot Trooper. God damn, that reinforces the field. The Grenadier. Um, when played, lowers the power of enemy cards by four. That is, that's a nice one. Uh, the Ogre, we got the Devil Rider. So cool. This card has no abilities, but it really backs up the field. So if you push a forward offensive and then reinforce your back row, we got the Zoo. We got the Quetzalcoatl. That's an interesting reinforcement there as well, actually. And the Toxarat, when played, lower the power of allied and enemy cards on the affected tiles by three. So that's a good little power reduction one to throw in. Hmm, okay. Let's delete a, one of the wolves, one of the crabs, one of the sweepers, and we'll put in uh, Quetzalcoatl and a Grenadier. And I'm going to get rid of an Alpha Dunk. Um, and... Oh, this is a this is a tough balance. I do still need level one cards for sure. There's no point having a Mandragora when you can have a Levicron though. Like, it's literally the same card for one less power. Uh, you do not want that. I want the Toxarat as well. Just have to balance this power out a little bit. And I think we'll go for Man as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones. Five twos. Alright, let's try this. Let's try this deck. And we get Shiva as a reward for this. Now, so this one... So it will lower the power of allied enemy cards affected by one, so it's going to lower that power, but it doesn't do anything else. I could destroy it with the Grenadier, it'll go BAM, and it's out of here. It does have three power, so I'll think about that. What's this one? This is when played, lower the power of enemy cards by three. Good shit. Ooh, that's... that's not good. Um... When played, add it to... oh, you can add one to your hand. That's good. That's... that's cool, I suppose. I really need my Queen B card. I'm in I'm in trouble here. Cause I'm definitely gonna get outclassed on these last remaining ones. Which is not good. Hmm. Oopsie. Oh okay. 
He's put the grenadier in the wrong place. I, am I gonna win? Oh. Uh. You just, you just def defeated your own card. <laughs> if she played the grenadier there, that would have lowered my fat chocobo by four. Okay. Well, now I get to I get to do another turn. That's nice. <laughs> and then I get and then I've powered that up. <laughs> I definitely should have lost that one, but Isabel misplayed, and now I won. I'll take it. Ha, ah, yeah, I knew I was going to win the whole time. So when played, spawn diamond dust of power 2, 4, or 6 in empty positions. Spawn diamond dust of power 2, 4, or 6 in empty positions. Wild. Damn. I want to see what that looks like. You took the wind right out of my sails. And here I was thinking my ship was unsinkable. Happy to be proven wrong, though. Especially by a real pro. Glad we could get that match in before I moved on. With all that pent-up frustration, <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to think or sail straight. Thanks for clearing my head. I'm gonna stick around a bit longer. Just enough to swab the deck once more. Yeah, let's swab the deck together in a rematch. I'll take you on as many times as you want. Why is this such a horny, like, Queen's Blood match? All right, um, let's edit the deck. We're gonna get Shiva in here. Shiva's only a level two, so I'm going to throw out. Um, I'm gonna throw out my Moo, I think, and put Shiva in here. I'm excited to use her. Let's see if we can get Shiva on the field. So here we go. Ah, uh, so it puts diamond dust on anything that is, yeah, that is, uh, well, I can't play any cards now. So I just, I just literally destroyed myself with diamond dust because it just, it's just a way for you to spawn in some empty power whenever you've got a pawn in a space. So now I've just ruined my thing. Let's start that again and try and use Shiva more strategically. Because it can also brick your entire board there. There you go. You gotta play that one carefully. So this could be the move. We could now play Shiva and it will block those two spots with Diamond Dust. And we do win, but like that, yeah, Shiva has to be kind of like the last thing that you play because you will not be able to play any more cards after that. Interesting move, and it says two, four, or six, so I guess it, like, is random. Or maybe it's the rank of the actual square. If it's rank one, it's two, rank two, four, rank three, six. But there you go. Feels That's how Shiva operates. Gives me a real run for my money. Oh, because we've got another Queen's Blood player. Oh, well, would you look at that? I finally hooked a catch, and a good one, too. Bet you thought you could blow me out of the water just because I'm getting on in years, hmm? Well, think again. I'm this town's ace angler, Zoga, and I've caught much bigger QB fish than you, Sonny. I tell you that much. You young'uns can thrash all you like, but you'll never beat my years of experience. Yes. Win and you'll rise in rank. All right, I'm going to edit my deck to get rid of Shiva. I think it would be amazing if Shiva could freeze other players or their pawns or something so they couldn't play them for maybe like a turn or two. You can like delay their plays. I don't know. But I guess that's not how the game works. Um, I'm going to, instead of Shiva, I'm going to do... The Devil Rider could be interesting. We'll try the Devil Rider. And we get the Zimzilet as a reward. Jeez. 
Jesus. A freight is on the board. Hello. Raise power by two for each other enhanced allied card. And that's a straight nine. That's crazy. Okay, there's the enhancement. And then he's only got one more that he can place on the board. But it's 14, so I need to match that. Which I do think is possible. Okay, we're gonna... We'll try this. Might be a misplay, might not be. Okay, we now win. Because I, yeah, get to attack a freak, take him down a notch. Perfect. Yeah, baby. Alright, we win. Goodbye. That a free card, though. That's crazy powerful. It's very interesting how Queen's Blood is played, because, like, my triple triad brain is, you know, whenever you see a character play a card, you're like, I can win that card from them in triple triad. But in this one, it's like, you have fixed rewards. So, Zemzalet. Raise the power of allied cards on affected tiles by three. It's got a nice little power up, an L shape, and then a power up behind it. Goodness. Support card. This makes you the one that got away. Serves me right for looking down on you just because you're young. Yeah, that's right, old man. I'm a blood squire now. Like fishing, you know. Gotta be patient. Wait for the right moment, then deal them in. Time it wrong, and you'll be watching your victory swim away. <sighs> Just look what happened to me. Guess I had a bigger catch on my hands than I thought. <sighs> I should have been more careful. Let that be a lesson to you. I got to listen to more of the Final Fantasy VII music uninterrupted there for a second. It was almost as if someone was trying to talk, but I just couldn't hear them. And I felt at peace. So, I can relay that information to you. <laughs> we can now challenge Cameron in the Crow's Nest. And it's given us a preview of that map early. God, this is so cool to see. There you go. There's Mr. Dolphin. Good job out there. So this is Priscilla. Priscilla with kids. This is great that there are other children in Junon except like in the original when it was literally like just Priscilla. Don't want to miss feeding time, do you? That's it. Eat up now. I know you must be starving. <laughs> great how fleshed out this is. That's the most chill fishing I've ever seen in my life. Just the one-handed, wow, this is easy. Where am I going right now? Oh, what the hell? Oh, forks. Only kids allowed in here. No grown-ups. Ah, okay. The kids hide out. We're gonna have another Sector 5 slum situation on our hands. That frog has a hat on. What is going on in here, kids? What are you doing? You're not turning kids into frogs in this weird mist, are you? I'll be back. You haven't heard the last of me. Damn, we can, yeah, we can go swimming. Now let's dive underwater and see if we can see the underwater reactor. <laughs> Just imagining the deep, deep ocean and the bottomless pit beneath us, guys. Giant hulking metal reactor down there. Doesn't it make you 
very comfortable. Okay. Very good, kids. Hey, Materia. What you got for me? HP up material, I'll take it. And ether. Worth taking a poke around. I think it's time for us to go to the inn now, however. The port of under Junon. Sorry, the ship won't be leaving port until the festivities are over. And that'll be our way back. In the old days, you believe it or not, there's a reactor at the bottom of this bed. Oh, the bed like a man dying of course, you control. The ocean's real quiet. Huh. Many, many days since we've seen like the city once floated on these very waters. That's stupid. Cities don't float. <laughs> it was a large city with many people built atop a series of connected ships called a flotilla. That sounds awesome! But it was always rocking back and forth, back and forth. Well, I think I'd get seasick. <laughs> you get used to it in time. So what happened to the floating city? Where did it go? <sighs> Into the depths. Shinra sank it in the water. The flotilla now rests at the bottom of the sea, along with its hidden treasures. Hidden treasure? For real? I want to hear about the treasure! Dude, when we get the submarine, it's gonna be crazy. They're like, Final Fantasy VII's open world is currently explorable by Chocobo. We will soon unlock Buggy. We will then soon unlock Tiny Bronco. Nothing we will then soon unlock High Wind. We will then soon unlock Submarine. And there's just all of these different elements of like world map traversal that will get land, sky, and sea available to us. If you thought the fleshing out of the land was going to be crazy, now we've got like the history of Junon being a sunken city with its treasures, and you'll be able to go and check that out, you know? Wouldn't it be cool if that was just a straight image of Ultros? <laughs> it's like one of the only classic Final Fantasy boss monsters I know that I haven't... Uh, I haven't played those games, but Ultros makes an appearance in uh, Kingsglaive, Final Fantasy XV, and then also Final Fantasy XIV. So it's just some instances of classic monsters that I'm aware of. And one of these days, I'll be playing the classic Final Fantasy games blind on the channel as well. I'm most excited for Final Fantasy IV, V, and VI, I think, but the originals would be very nice to check out as well. Got some materia. Oh. Got some more lightning materia. Just when I thought I'd run out of lightning materia. <laughs> Alright, back down we go. Let's book into this place. Hello there. Room for one. It begins. Anybody that sword. Please? You're some kind of fighter, aren't you? That was Priscilla. And from the sound of it, she needs a tough guy like you to lend a hand. Somebody, please! Help! We gotta go! Now! Oh! There's a monster attacking the boat! That's Priscilla. Okay. Priscilla was not the children with uh, the, the Priscilla was not with those please, children. Please! Alright, hang on. Hang on a second. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I have to do something for no particular discernible reason. 
Um, Alright, we're going to change to the high caliber rifle because there is a linked materia slot. And we are going to remove that. Um, and we're going to take off auto cast. And we're going to put on lightning. And we're going to put on elemental. Elemental on the weapon. Um, we've got lightning. Healing, Assessment, um, Tifa, Little bit of a equipment shift. This is so different, I love it. I was wondering when she was gonna show up. Yuffie! Grab his fin and hold on tight! Wow, they know who she is, okay. <laughs> Somebody catch her. Oh god. Hey, we're coming. Hey, Shinra's most wanted. Get rid of that thing. Say what? Barrett, focus. Here we go. Bottoms well, baby. Get its attention. On it. Oh, this is the arena that we fight on. Okay. Dude, I love Bottoms Well so much. Terror of the Deep. Okay, new name. Yes, look at this aerial combo. Who needs long range materia like you used to? You used to get long range materia in the Mithril Mine. Right, let me assess this bad boy. Dude, okay. Now that we're assessing, we can talk about this. Now, original game, Yuffie is a secret missable character, and the first time you can encounter her, it's playing the Wutai battle theme, by the way. Mwah. Like, because it's associated with Yuffie. Listen to this. That's the battle version of the Wu-Tai theme. What I love is you can encounter Yuffie for the first time in the Junon region between Fort Condor and Junon, but you know that she's going to come into the story in a, uh, in a, like, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Compulsory capacity. You have to pick her up. She's not missable this time. So I'm waiting for her introduction because the last we saw of her, she's just riding away on Choco back, just thinking about what to do next. So this is exceptional, but the people in the town, or at least Priscilla, they know who she is. She didn't just wander in here. So that's really great. I'm so excited for Yuffie get to get added to the party, dude. 
A monstrous aquatic creature that lives off the coast of Junon, it possesses a buoyancy that allows it to swim at high speeds through both the water and air. It ingests seawater and then expels it with explosive force to stun prey. Inflicting enough damage on its head while it's in the water will pressure it and cause it to take to the air. Attacking the water cells it creates will pop them. And this is also amazing because I think, yeah, we've got a water cell at the moment. Magic damage will pop it faster. So it was only available to be popped by magic in the original game. This is exceptional. I'm actually really surprised, that, but not really, that they chose the Wutai version of the battle theme here. It's a great way to introduce Yuffie's character. And just adding another person to our already great cast of characters to learn their abilities. Oh, very excited. All right, let's get this water cell dealt with. I know, I'm building up my ATB gauge. Honestly, I may as well just keep hitting at this point. There we go. You're free, Barrett. Okay. Alright, who's in water? Barrett, get out of there, will ya? Out! Keep it together. All set! Watch yourself! Yeah! Hang back! Nice. There's the stagger. Oh, we've hit a locked version. Next phase. Oceanic Tornado, okay. This is cool. Oh, never mind. Tight, okay. Spells will get the job done quicker. I know, but I okay. Tifa's dead. What's the matter, two ought to speed things up? Yes, I know that. We're in a bit of a bind here. We still got a job to do. Yeah, they clear. Come on, damn it. You're up. I got this. <laughs> Okay, let me get away from here so I can heal Tifa. Just managed to get that off. Avalanche two step. Finish this. Almost. It's on you. Nice. Tear of the deep defeated. Oh no, you don't. Yes, Cloud. What a great move set as well. I love that it kept the water cells in. No tidal wave this time though. Nice work. The I wet hair, dude. Girl. Come on. I don't think she's breathing. Hey, we need help over here. Ah, they've changed it. They said, okay, maybe let's not have Cloud give CPR to a child for some reason. 
and instead have Cloud give CPR to a different child. Yuffie's still underage. <laughs> But I guess it's less weird, I suppose. But it's a medical emergency. There's nothing weird about CPR. I'm curious as to why they've changed it from Priscilla to Yuffie. I would assume it's for that reason. We need to get her breathing again. All right, Cloud. Breathing mini game for CPR. <laughs> Don't just stand there, help me! You're on chest compressions. Got it. Okay, it's different now. Now, start! We're doing chest compressions. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's funny. That's, that's hilarious. <laughs> You picked the wrong girl, creep! What? That's, fun. That's funny. <sighs> hey, you're those Avalanche guys! <laughs> those guys there are from the Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell? They used to be with Avalanche, but left after a policy dispute. <sighs> Easy. They're guests of mine. And this one was trying to save your life. He was? Ugh, nice going, Yuffie. Call the guy a creep, why don't ya? You big moron! Dum 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Yuffie. Let's get you inside. You've had a rough day. Yeah. Alright. Thank you very much. You're welcome! <laughs> Not to be that guy, but kids these days, I swear. Now, now. <sighs> Who's that? Another one of my guests. I seem to get a lot of them when the world's on fire. Okay, that was great. Uh, I see why they changed it now. They changed it for a humorous gag of Cloud going for the grabby hands and Yuffie freaking out and getting the wrong idea, um, which is pretty funny. So they took out the CPR breathing mini game, <laughs> and I understand it now. That's pretty funny, though. God damn. Uh, Bottoms Well, or the Terror of the Deep, as you may call it. Uh, really fun fight. Shut that reactor down. Interesting that Priscilla is not in any danger like she was in the original. She's just like, help! Yuffie's in a boat. That's a cool change. Thanks so much, you guys. Those were some fancy moves. And this is where we get our second summon materia. Uh, you save Priscilla in the original. You give her the CPR breathing mini game, and she gives you the Shiva summon materia. So. By this time in the original game, you've got Choco Mog and Shiva. That girl's certainly something, isn't she? So we've gotten an introduction to Yuffie. Yuffie knows who Avalanche is, but no uh, hanging out together just yet. Monsters like that one have been cropping up more and more lately. Goddamn reactors to blame. The fact that synergy attacks from Intergrade with Yuffie and Sonon were so fun and then it's building on that so incredibly with all of the synergy stuff with all the party members. I'm really excited to see what Yuffie can do with everyone here. Another long range fighter as well. And it's kind of great because from someone who's played the original countless times, I never really utilized some of the extra characters in the party that much. I had like my particular favorites and I've done more of an effort to kind of use those characters in recent replays of the original game. But playing as Yuffie in Integrade was so great. I was like, this DLC made me love the character of Yuffie when I was very indifferent to her originally. And I'm super excited to play as Kate Sith. 
as well, and future characters. I just feel like they're gonna be so unique. Ocean's real quiet today. Too quiet. Something's broken. <laughs> she Naruto runs to us. Hello. Hey, you guys are that avalanche splinter cell, right? Now, how the hell did you- I just gotta say, I'm a big, huge fan of yours. HQ wishes they could be as cool as you guys. <sighs> well, uh, we are pretty cool, but- <laughs> Think we could sit down for a chat later? Got a teensy favor to ask. And gotta thank you for before. Uh, I suppose you could come by the inn tomorrow? Sweet! You won't be sorry, promise. Later! The run, dude. Um, Such a kid. I know, I know, she laid it on pretty thick. But hey, she's just a kid. What's the harm in hearing her out? Maybe she wants your autograph. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get ourselves some rooms. Dude, Barrett is so good. Like... It's really tough because I think all these characters are so amazingly well done in the remake, but I think out of the transition from original to this remake trilogy, the, my favorite character is Barrett. I think my favorite, in terms of how he's been written, his characterization, everything is Barrett. It's, he's just such a shining element of this whole entire story. It's great. <laughs> He's like, kids these days. He's like, you know what? We are kind of cool. <laughs> He's just so great. So good. So we'll get a formal introduction tomorrow. Yuffie knows we're staying at the inn. Um, why do I get the feeling like I'm about to have all of my materia stolen? For no discernible reason whatsoever. <laughs> I do really miss how you recruit Yuffie in the original. She has no idea who you are. You beat her up. You have to handle the situation in a very specific way, otherwise she runs away and steals money All from right. you. Let's see. <laughs> and then if you uh, handle it properly, she'll join you. But it's all part of her plan. Hey, if it isn't the heroes of the hour, I heard about what you did for that girl. Thank you so much. Your stay is on us. We insist. It's the least we can do for you, really. Now then, how many we got? Will four rooms be enough? Uh, could you make it five? Five it is. Oh, everything is comped. So if you need anything at all, just ask. Don't know about you, but I'm dying to put my feet up. It's nice to have the place booked up again for once. Gosh, when was the last time that happened? Everything is comped means everything is complimentary, right? Everyone in their separate rooms, huh? It's open. Wow, we're having one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, we're having one-on-one -on -one time with all of our companions in their rooms, okay. Hey, so about that Yuffie kid, what do you think she wants with us? Be honest. Could be that she's after those Shinra bounties. <sighs> you know, you might be right about that. Little punk blowing smoke up our asses. Ought to give her a piece of my mind. There's no, um... <laughs> there's no option for... Could be after our material. Shinra didn't waste any time getting our names and faces out here, did they? The fact that we're on a timer puts pressure on me. I need to think. I could feel them slipping away, one by one, and the tighter I held on, the more I lost. I know. I felt the same. It was like they were sucking them straight out of my head. Whoa. Aerith has met someone that has also encountered the Whispers. And the worst part is that I don't even know what's missing. Only that something is. Like it's on the tip of my tongue, but I just can't remember. Damn whispers. Speaking of, have you seen them lately? <laughs> hmm? Cloud. Who's in there with you? 
Oh. Hmm. Red. Thought it was someone else. No. Nope. I'll clear here, officer. Ha <laughs> knows how to use a dog. The rest of your patrol is just as uneventful. It didn't sound like red, did it? Come in. I mean, I guess it was red because he's the only one in here. <laughs> so he was also talking about the whispers with Aerith, which is so cool. And this was the thing from Remake is Aerith knew more than she should know at that time. And the way that she talked and addressed things was very strange. Same with Sephiroth. And the whispers were taking that away from her. Hmm. You don't mind if I poke around in here, do you? An Empress's Scepter. Okay. New weapon. God, I still haven't mastered Chrono Aegis, apparently. I thought that I had. Radiant Ward. Conjure a ward that grants invincibility while casting spells. Strengthens Aerith's basic attack. Nice. I'll finish Chrono Aegis first. I don't know about you, but it feels like we've been on the road forever. Like Midgar's ancient history. I wonder how Mom and Marlene are holding up. Homesick? Mm -mm. No time for that, not with Sephiroth around. Mm. So, a little random, but do you remember the first time we met? You shoved a flower at me. <laughs> you shoved a flower in my face. It's called a gift, Cloud. I saw it, you know, in a vase at Seventh Heaven. And I seriously doubt you're the one who put it there. Hey, I mean, you never know. Some advice? Never re-gift a present from a girl. Especially if you're just gonna give it to another one. Noted. Water under the bridge. But next time... Dude. <laughs> And that makes so much sense that she would do that as well, which is so funny because she goes to help Marley and she's like, hey, I know that flower. That's a really nice touch. I love how they bring in stuff that happened before. Very, very funny. I had to do the flower so we could at least get it right instead of saying the church. You were the slum drunk, right? <laughs> And it's interesting because the original game had the choice between giving the flower to either Tifa or Marlene as well. Well, that's so funny. Cloud getting scolded. That was a gift, Cloud, and you gave it to another girl. We're seeing Aerith poking at the whole Cloud and Tifa thing a lot. That's, this is three times. Where do you think those guys in black went? We should have seen them by now. Oh, they all went on the Genova Express. Red going into his own room is so funny. Hello? Yes? Yes? This town reeks of fish and brine. Should Shinra come calling, I doubt I'll smell them till it's too late. We'll manage. <laughs> it feels like I have fish bones in my nose. Alright, I've deepened with red. I guess it just hits a particular, like, point. Not necessarily in dialogue, but also in combat and all of that, that plays into the meter actually going up. So it won't always only go up in dialogue. My poor nose. <laughs> my poor nose. Where's Tifa? Tifa's upstairs with me, huh? Oh! Hey! Perfect timing. I was just about to come find you. Yeah, I... 
You... Regret what I said in calm. Oh. Come in. Everyone else is optional except for Tifa. I should have never doubted you. It's fine. I never should have doubted you either. Say, do you remember a guy named Emilio from Nibelheim? The general store kid? Yeah. <sighs> anyway, he left the village right before you did. Thought I'd never see him again. Then one day last year, he shows up at Seventh Heaven. I couldn't believe my eyes. He was all grown up. Didn't even recognize him at first. Really? Yeah, and what's more, the woman who walked in with him was stunning. Like, she could have been a model and... <sighs> You're not interested, are you? Not really. But uh, I'm happy to listen, so go ahead. It's okay. Forget it. Was this another test? No, it wasn't. I... <sighs> Why deny it? I guess it was, huh? I'm sorry. It's fine. We'll find time to talk. Just the two of us. Figure things out. Just be ready to spill your guts, huh? <laughs> With my iron stomach? <laughs> like Sephiroth spilled your guts with his sword. Night. Mm, their relationship is so important. I love them so much. Very good. Uh, so out of all of the characters, Tifa's is the compulsory one to do. And it's important that you don't go for, the only one I remember is you, babe, because that will not reinforce a good mindset because she's like, she doesn't even believe that we're real. <laughs> she's like, Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. She's digging to reinforce herself in a positive way of, yeah, this is Cloud. This is the Cloud that I know. And if we were to, you know, recall a memory from our past and be like, I only remember you, not good. <laughs> Being able to actually speak about the people from the village and remember that uh, helps her uh, be at ease. And she's like, okay. Cloud remembers that kid. He's not good boyfriend material in the sense like, oh, I'm talking and you're not interested. He's like, not really. I'll listen though. <laughs> uh, but the, the tension between them, um, it's steamy. I can fill a room with, uh, with palpable nature is what it does when the two of them are talking. I think I'll turn in early tonight. Yeah, very, very interesting for that to be the, the compulsory scene. They'll figure things out, guys. They'll have a they'll have some alone time eventually. Time for me to turn in too. It's interesting having Tifa be like, wow, this woman was so beautiful, she could be a model. It's like, Tifa. Tifa. <laughs> what are you saying, girl? Ooh. Bit nauseous, Cloud. Gotta work out. Keep that soldier condition in prime shape. <laughs> Who could it possibly be? But Yuffie. <laughs> Come on in, guys. Hey. 
I was sleeping. <laughs> okay. Now that the gang's all here, it's time you got to know me. My name is Yuffie, Materia Hunter and Elite Ninja Operative for the Interim Wutai Government. I left my beloved homeland behind to bring an end to Shinra's reign of terror and prove that Wutai's not to be trifled with! <laughs> Uh, Wu-Tai? Yep. Which brings me to that little favor I mentioned yesterday. Long story short, I want you to join me. HQ, they just didn't understand. But you guys get it. <sighs> Don't ninjas creep around in the dark slitting people's throats. I mean, we've done some shit, but we ain't about to stoop that one. I resent that. <laughs> Although... Is something we do. Come here. Traveling alone so far from home is expensive. So I've been moving from town to town, hustling, scraping together enough scratch to keep sticking it to the man. Until, that is, I came here. And lucky I did, because I met Rhonda. She offered me the gig of a lifetime, an assassination. And guess who the target is? Seriously, guess! <sighs> Just spit it out already. Who else but a certain company's new president, Rufus freaking Shinra! That crazy or what? And that douchebag will be here any minute now. Up there here anyway. Enjoying his fancy inauguration parade. These people had their country stolen from them, and then their sunlight. Junon demands revenge. So when the president steps out... Oh, wow. Tell us more. Mm. Okay. You want to know how Rhonda's planning on paying me? With your bounty suckers. What? Wow, gotta hand it to her. The lady works fast. Well, this was fun. See ya. Hey! <laughs> If you manage to get away, you should try to find Priscilla. She'll get you topside. <laughs> now, now! You don't want to make me come in there and fetch you, because I would love to do it! Who's that? <sighs> A pain in the ass. Let's go. Dude, perfect. I saw that dude on the motorbike immediately rush his back. Oh my god, okay, so, breaking it down, breaking it down, Barrett's like, we're not about to stoop that low, it's not like we bombed reactors, <laughs> it's not like we caused acts of or significant harm to innocents surrounding the vicinity of said reactor bombings, and then we've got Yuffie talking about being given a contract to off Rufus Shinra, they're like, hey, you a ninja? You're that ninja. And I don't I don't believe for a second that Rhonda is the one turning us in. I think that actually what I said to Barrett was potentially true and Yuffie uh, could be potentially slinging that one our way, but we'll, we'll see. Maybe Rhonda did actually betray us. We'll have to wait and see. But this is a very great way to keep things going. Yuffie's not in the party yet. We're just being like teased with her appearances and her energy. She does her same Materia Fancy Pants introduction with the Fushigi. Uh, she's got the Fort Condor symbol on her pants, by the way. I noticed that, uh, which is pretty cool. And Roche is back from the first remake. Oh uh, my god. And that actually is quite funny when everyone is like, who's that? Because Cloud only encountered him with Biggs, Wedge and Jesse when they were doing the topside mission. So the rest of the crew don't even know this dude. This is very fun. Friends together again. <laughs> he does love me, doesn't he, this Roche fella? Ooh. 
What light from yonder balcony breaks? Come on down and say hello. He's just revving it. <laughs> His heart revs with anticipation. Everyone's just standing here watching and waiting. Okay. Is it a 1v1 again? So glad that they brought him back. Honestly, how long do you intend to keep me waiting? Absence certainly makes the heart grow fonder, my friend. <laughs> Still playing hard to get, eh? Well, I've got news for you, young man. As if by fate, the speed demon has been entrusted with a singular task. Retrieving one Aerith Games Boy. Uh, me? You come alone? <laughs> it only takes two to tango. Besides, you and I like to go big, and a venue this small just won't do. But no need to worry. I found the perfect stage. The city above, where we can dance up a storm. Seek me out, and we'll put our last performance to shame. With a show none shall ever forget. You got some weird friends, man. <laughs> we might want to think about getting out of here. These people don't need more trouble. Yuffie said to talk to Priscilla if we wanted to get topside, right? Let's go find her. Thanks for dealing with that Shinra nut job. Don't you think for even a second we did that for you? The slime ball who sold us out. Take it. Not much, but it's yours. The hell's this supposed to be? <laughs> Your bounty. Part of it, anyway. You thought I'd put you through the ringer like that without making it worth your while? We're on the same side. Always have been. And what if Biker Boy had taken us in? Then I would have had to improvise. But I didn't, because it all worked out. Worked out fine. Like I pray it will for Yuffie upstairs. Damn, so she actually did uh, sell us out and call it in. Disappointed! But there you go. Uh, and we can go through to topside area through Priscilla, as expected. Uh, and very interesting that we have Roche coming in here because Yuffie and Roche have actually met in the Integrate DLC. He plays Fort Condor with her. <laughs> like, he's a Fort Condor player in the DLC, which is so funny. I just love how over the top he is. And also the fact that above all else, he has his own sort of agenda of what he wants to do because he's like obsessed with Cloud. So it's like he doesn't really care as much about Shinra's mission if it's fun for him. Like, when we beat him previously, he helped us out, you know? Because he's like, I'll see you next time. Um, we do have the uh, Crows base camp here. We've got uh, a few triple, tr uh, not triple triad, Queen's Blood players, um, because I'm assuming it's opened up for us now so we can actually go in here with the divine uh, intel. That will allow us to also do the photo while we're here as well. So before we head topside, we're going to take a look at these quests and we can go to the crow's nest and make sure that we have the Junon region uh, completed. Do no Goody little doggy. <laughs> Didn't think you'd still be hanging around. Well, since you clearly don't have anything better to do, think I could put you to work? The remainder of your bounty. I need it delivered to someone. 
I've already got a porter picked out, too. This here is Salmon. Oh. Since he'll be the one making the drop, it's your job to get him there safe. Doesn't seem like too much of a hassle, but who exactly is this money for? My son. Haven't seen him in a spell. Not since he left town. And never looked back. This gills me washing my hands of him. He's a grown man. Can't be clinging to his mom's skirts. Or her pocketbook. Interesting. So, full bounty, which by the way, 100,000 and then 500,000 for Aerith, and she gives us 5,000. <laughs> Obviously she can't give us such a significant sum, otherwise the video game is broken. But it is pretty funny. Um, just give us the money and make us deliver it, but we have to escort a dog, which is adorable, but um, not efficient. The crow's nest. Boy got sick of living under this steel sky. And my thumb, I suppose. So he went into the mountains way east of here. Found some more like-minded idiots. Kinda sad, if I'm being honest. If you're gonna run away, at least go somewhere interesting. Don't half-ass it. I love that we got another Steel Sky mention. You got Aerith leaving Midgar. How she previously spoke about the Steel Sky, and then how much she misses it when we left. And Junon being very similar. I meant what I said. Can't afford to take care of this town and his shit. I raised him best I could. Gave him every advantage. But he's gotta learn to stand on his own two feet. Besides, I've got someone else to take care of now. Don't I, Sam? He's gotta learn to stand on his own two feet. So I'm gonna give him a boatload of money. Uh... <laughs> He's, that's not how you teach them the lesson. He's like, oh, cool. Boatload of money for my mom. Much obliged. Once you make it to the crow's nest, find Toby. He'll make sure you get the reward I promised. But if I find a single hair out of place on Sam, you won't live to enjoy it. You keep my boy safe. So we're going to do a salmon escort mission and we have to like walk all the way to the crow's nest with him instead of them just giving us the money, which is great. Two things that are different about this as well uh, in regards to sleeping in the inn is I was expecting to have a little bit of a dream sequence. A little bit. Because the original does have a little thing that happens. Um, but they've handled it a little bit differently. They just have Cloud and Tifa having a bit of a conversation instead. So it was a peaceful sleep. And then you don't wake up to the sound of the presidential inauguration ceremony music. Just, uh, it's not playing loud enough for us to hear it down here. We'll probably hear it as we get closer. We got another side quest here, I think. Uh, we have Calling All Frogs. There you go. The Frogmaster. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. And that'll be in that secret kids hideout where we saw all the frogs, huh? And there was a frog wearing a hat, so I assume that that is our... Frogmaster. <laughs> uh, so I think we should do that first. Something I think I want to get into the habit of doing is uh, equipping like the better looking gear when we're going into like side quest or story related stuff and we're having them appear in cutscenes and then when we go into the actual battle and we're preparing for combat we change to the preferred gear. <laughs> try and get into the habit of that. Alright, let's see. Now this is apparently a kid's hideout. Look, there are more frogs than there used to be. The kids are turning themselves into frogs. Hello? Ribbit? Oh. Uh, hello? Hey, what do you think you're doing here? This is a no grown-up zone. Get lost! You're a kid? Well, duh. 
It's just how this place is. I don't know if it's because of the reactor out there or what, but hanging out here turns you into a frog. Take Finn, who are they? Not Shinra, I hope. Oh no, we're definitely not. Oh wait, you must be the ones Priscilla was talking about. She told me how you saved her. Right, that's us. We're friends. Are you a friend of hers too? We're friends, but it's not like I like her or anything. It's just, there aren't a lot of other kids in the village, so I basically had to be your friend. <laughs> of course. So what are you kids doing all the way down here? Uh, playing Jump Frog, obviously. Actually, we could use a couple more players. Since you're here, do you want to give it a try? Oh, God. <clears throat> Come on, Cloud. But we have to do it as a frog. Yep. <laughs> like I said, hanging out here turns you into a frog. But don't worry. All you gotta do is start thinking like a frog, and you'll be fine. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. We got this. It's just Cloud and Tifa as frogs. What about Barrett? Get in here, Barrett. Barrett's just looking at us, dude. Are you getting in? Barrett, get in. There he is. <laughs> now, let me I, let me pose a question here to the floor. Um, Barrett, as a frog, hang on. Um, I can't switch to him. Barrett, as a frog. Like, he has his glasses. Because I assume this is the same model from the first part of the remake where he still has his sunglasses as well. But he gets a hand back as a frog. And instead of having a gun, it's like a little bracelet thing. Is that bizarre? It's like a Dr. Connor's turning into the lizard scenario. He grows his like limb back. It's really interesting to think about that. And do you think Barrett's aware of that fact that he gets a frog hand and he's like, huh? I mean, just the fact that Cloud's Buster Sword gets miniaturized as well is hilarious to me. Imagine if he was dragging around a massive sword. Okay, so we've got to take on fiends as a frog. What about Red 13 and Aerith? Do they get turned into frogs when they come in here too? Yep. There they go. <laughs> We're all frogs. There you go. We get to see Red 13's version. <laughs> Dude, what a what a freeze frame. Oh, that is uh that is exceptional. He's got a scarred eye still, that's very cool. Okay. Okay, so okay, okay. I now have to fight a bunch of fiends as frogs. Tifa gets a skirt, which is so funny. Is it? Skirt is a frog. Now, Bubble Breath is like a healing ability. We don't. We just have the ability to leapfrog, jump high into the air, and crush on an enemy. So we're playing leapfrog. There you go. Nice. Yeah, so Barrett. Hang on. Yeah. What an interesting design. Also, goddamn, those things are terrifying. Staggered, baby. Get leapfrogged. Uh, fighting as frogs. Very good. Now we have to also see Yuffie's frog form as well eventually. Ready to play? Come on, I love it. I promise. Ribbit? 
for a bit. <laughs> the fact that they just say ribbit, oh my god, hello, look at them all! Jump frog, press circle to leap over incoming obstacles and dash to safety with either R2 or L3. We're literally doing like, uh, what is it, wipeout as frogs. Remain on your, the platform for as long as you can to prove your amphibian finesse. Get knocked off though and you'll croak. Alright, full guys, Final Fantasy, let's go. We need to survive for a minute and 20 seconds. And we get three enfeeblement rings, which I think is preventing the frog status effect, ironically. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Stay on the platform for a minute 20. Look at us all go. They turned frog guys into fall guys. <laughs> Dude. But then you also have to avoid parts of the platform that are going to give way, apparently. Oh, I heard someone go. Who was that? Oh no! I got distracted by someone else getting knocked off! <laughs> Alright, it's one frog for himself. I can't get distracted. Look at the crew! Look at the frog gang, dude! <laughs> Aerith gets her uh, bandana. Oh my god. Alright, had to do photo mode quickly. Let's stay. Who will be the last one standing? Oh, who got knocked off? Oh god, oh god, oh god, the, the moving of the up and the downs. I think Barrett and Aerith are both gone. Oh god, no! 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 The platform! Okay, you lost two of them, right? I survived for the one rank. What do you think? It's pretty fun, right? Eh, I've played worse. Meh. Anyway, thanks again for your help. You can come back again if you want. You look like you were having fun. Ribbit. <laughs> Ribbit. I could get used to it. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. Ribbit, Ribbit. <coughs> hey! <laughs> Ribbit, Ribbit, Ribbit. <laughs> Your relationship with Tifa has changed. Very good. Tifa straight up would like, would you love me if I was a frog? All right, we simply must keep playing. The ribbit, ribbit. Want to get hopping again? All right, we got this. Multiple platforms falling down together is going to make this a challenge. I won't be able to keep this up for long. Okay. Ugh. Just follow it in a circle. Oh, we're gonna start losing platforms, okay. All right, I'm stuck on this one now. And then we're gonna be on another shorter one as well. Oh God, and it's speeding up. Oh! See you, someone. No! Okay. Oh! Oh! Platform was falling! <laughs> oh, 17 seconds away. Ribbit. Right, there's rank two. Ribbit, ribbit. Oh, no! Oh my god, <laughs> I was like right on the edge. Come on, oh my god. Almost there. All right, we got this in the bag. Oh. Uh. Got it. <laughs> ribbit, ribbit. Nice, there we go. We're looking ribbit. at whack rank three. Ribbit. Get me out of here. Ribbit. Ribbit, ribbit. All right, squad, move out. If only you were frogs on the main menu as well. So we've got the enfeeblement ring. Um, 
Oh no, hang on. Enfeeblement is granting Toad at the start of battle. Not being uh, immune to it. I don't know why I thought I was immune to it. In the original game, it's called a white cape. I can't remember the remake version, if it's the same or not. We literally get granted Toad at the start. Awful. Okay. <laughs> Let's get out of here, shall we? We'll leave upper, we'll leave the lower Junon area and we'll head back out into the field. All right, let's rendezvous with Salmon. Let's take the dog for a walk, shall we? Words that I shouldn't say when my own dog is right next to me in this room. <laughs> Hello, dog. Follow Salmon, yes. Don't you worry. Any monster that wants to get you is gonna have to go through me. Yeah, the dog has health. Oh my god. Okay. Yep. Keep Salmon safe. Hey, Cloud. Remind me. How old were you when you left home? Fourteen. Wait. It was spring, so thirteen. Suppose that ain't too unusual for small town boys like you. What'd your mom have to say? Not much. Didn't try to stop me. Like you said, nothing unusual about it. But. But. Two thousand gil. She offered me that. To make a fresh start. <laughs> Guess moms are the same all over. I turned the money hmm. down though. Didn't need it, since I was planning to enlist straight away. <laughs> but you still can't help setting your price to two grand. Sentimental, ain't you? That's pretty damn cool, actually. So, Cloud's been asking for two grand, and it's like it has like an actual reminder to his mom about it. I like that we're taking this opportunity walking with Salmon to have some dialogue between our characters about things. More about Cloud's past. He's like, yeah, I'll take 2,000. It's what my mom would have wanted. Okay, hear me out. What? Know how some parents stop their kids from leaving the nest, claiming it's too soon or they're not ready. Any excuse to keep them at home. What about it? Loads of parents are like that, but I told myself I'd be different. I'd never keep my little girl from flying. I don't want to clip her wings. I want her to soar. <laughs> I hear you scoffing. You think I can't do it? You think I'll keep her all to myself? Oh, yeah. And that's what scares me. As much as I want to let her fly, I don't know if I'll be able to let go when the time comes. Maybe I'll panic, get in the way, hold her down, all to keep her safe. Oh, Marlene, I wish you could be my baby girl forever. I think my favorite thing about Barrett is the way that he... It's not necessarily that he is an absent father by any means because he's fighting for a cause and a just cause and he has to and he explains that you know he's got to keep fighting even though there are people like Elmira that scold him initially like how could you leave your daughter like that and I think what's really beautiful and touching about Barrett and Marlene is like he loves her and fights for her so, ever so dearly and it's not like she's not his uh, biological kid but it doesn't matter, you know? And that's like the, the beautiful thing with Barrett and Marlene that I adore. And I'm really, really looking forward to getting into some later storylines in this game about Marlene and Barrett. It's, we're like reaching the part of the original Final Fantasy VII story where we start to go, hey guys, emotional stuff. <laughs> And Remake, I just, I feel very confident it's going to handle it uh, with respect. I'm heavily anticipating particular scenes in this one. Barret would never let anything happen to Marlene. Will he be able to let her soar? The 
the fact that the dog is just hanging out like around us here it's like hello get to safety will you this is not safety shatter Talking about family, this is a great time for Red to speak up. Oh, my sweet baby girl. What? <laughs> Your daddy? Your silly daddy. He's gonna, he's gonna fail you. Oh, I can't let you go. I just can't. Barrett, get your shit together. Marlene's barely out of diapers. You've got time. Right, right. I'm just getting worked up over nothing. Yeah. She won't be leaving me for a while. Then again... Hey! Oh my god. Any opportunity to poke fun. What about Tifa? Tifa could talk about her father, which is probably a very traumatic event, actually, and forget that I brought that up. She doesn't. She probably does not want to talk about her father, actually, considering what happened in Nibelheim. And then, oh, Aerith, what... Oh, no, that's traumatic. <laughs> like, is there anyone that wants to talk about their family that's not traumatic? Nope. Okay, sorry that I asked. Alright, new enemies. Sandstorm Drakes, what are you doing out here? Detrimental status effects, petrify and stone. You have been petrified, taking a certain amount of damage while in this state will turn you to stone, rendering you incapacitated. Avoid damage until the status wears off or cure the ailment with Asuna remedies or other spells or items with similar effects. Where is the soft item when I need it? Right, assess straight away. Allow me. But yeah, things to bring up is you're like, anyone else want to talk about their family? Oh, trauma. Everyone's gone through some stuff, huh? Cloud's parents, dad left, mum's dead. Tifa's parents, uh, dad's dead. Assumedly also mum would have died in Nibelheim. Uh, Red's parentage, he hates his father. Um, Aerith lost her mother, adoptive mother that she still has with Marlene, that's nice. But real mother gone, ancient trauma. Uh, it's, yeah, <laughs> not good. Uh, anyway, the Sandstorm Drake is a rare Cyclone Drake variant. Creates sandstorms with its powerful wings to trap and weaken its prey. Attacking the aura that shrouds it will produce tornadoes. The aura will weaken with each tornado spawned, and once it has vanished, the Drake will become pressured. Attacking it from behind will weaken the aura without creating tornadoes. You have to get behind it, though. God damn. That's very specific. But by the time I get behind it, it, it turns around. Okay. I don't even think doing arrow is doing anything at the moment either. It's doing a weakness, but shit all damage. I can't get behind the Drake as Cloud. <laughs> That's not happening. How are we gonna have this stuff dissipate? There you go, there's the pressure. Once it's vanished, it'll become pressure. Try this. You're mine. Okay, there you go. It's only a matter of time. There we go. Finally. You're done. Salmon took damage, you asshole. I can't believe you've done this. God, it looks like I'm stuck, I can't move. <laughs> okay, 
zooming all over the place, dog. I think we're arriving. Sam, what are you doing here? <laughs> Came all this way and you're still full of energy. Uh, do I know you? We're Sam's bodyguards. Your mom hired us to keep him safe. And to make sure her boy got his allowance. Keep it. I ain't taking her money. I can make ends meet on my own. Who are they, Dylan? Friends of yours? Claire, what are you doing out of bed? You know you need to stay off your feet. I know you came all this way, but I can't accept that. Just make sure Sam gets home safe for me. You really are your mother's kid. Got her stubbornness and everything. Have it your way. <sighs> Why don't you hang on to it? This is a fortune. If you really don't want it, I'll take it off your hands. But as a parent, I'm sure you want to give your kid the best life you can. And in my experience, that don't come cheap. Think it over. That's true. We'll take it. Dilster, what's looking for you, dude? Toby. Sorry, got a little tied up. Hang on, aren't these guys with Avalanche? Rhonda said I might run into you. Avalanche? Wait, you mean they're the ones who blew up those reactors? The superstars themselves. I just want to say it is such an honor to meet you. Actually, while you're here, think I could ask you for a favor? Seeing as Dylan's, uh, situation seems to be taken care of? Yeah, it's all good. Excellent. In that case, why don't we step into my office for a chat? Right this way. Nice. Relationship with Barrett has deepened when words won't do. And that's nice. Being tied to parentage. I think that's a, a nice little side quest there, talking with Barrett about that. And then we can head into the crow's nest. We got more SP for Barrett too. You think my mom knew about me and Claire and the baby? I'm happy we were able to meet you. Almost feels like this little one brought us together. Okay, and we were met with the person we needed to deliver it to. Man, you Midgarinos are something else. Midgarinos. I, news, I was blown away. And here you are, lending me a hand. It's literally a dream come true. Hey, this isn't an office. What are you trying to pull? Regardless, we have now found our way to the crow's nest. And we've got side quests to do here. Chadley is also here, because of course he is. Uh, we've got Queen's Blood to play. We've got a piano to play with some sheet music, potentially. So we can actually play the piano uh, properly for the first time. I'm excited for that. And we will be doing that next time. So thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We'll be continuing on with Chapter 4, doing these side quests before we press on to Upper Junon. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.